Hi and welcome to Hummingbird Acres. Today we are going to set up a simple monarch enclosure so that you can raise monarchs right in your backyard. To set this up, you just need a couple of things. And the main thing that you are going to need is an ample supply of milkweed. So before you start raising monarchs in your backyard, make sure that you plant milkweed or you have a place that you can go and collect lots and lots of milkweed. Because a monarch eats tons of milkweed in its lifetime. You're also going to need a enclosure. I've linked this one below. I think it was between $15 and $20 off of Amazon. So not very expensive. I have a um, just a plastic container. This is a potato salad container we're just reusing and I poked about four holes in the top of it. This is what is going to hold our milkweed and we'll go out and collect that in a minute. You are also going to need a caterpillar or an egg. We have one that we found a couple of days ago and because it was just an egg at the time I put it in a tiny terrarium and I we've kind of left it in there for now. In this terrarium, because they are so small when they are little, I lined the top of this with insect mesh so that they can't get out. But he has lived in here very happily for now, but he is getting bigger and he's getting to the point where he needs a bigger environment to grow. So we are going to set this up for him. That way he can get nice and big and plump and he'll be able to form his chrysalis in here as well. The first thing that we're going to do is head out to our milkweed patch and we are going to collect four stems of milkweed. Just a little warning about milkweed before we head out there. When you cut the milkweed, it is going to produce a white sap. This sap is A, it's very sticky and B, if it gets into your eyes, it can cause irritation lots of irritation and it could really bother your eyes so make sure that when you cut it you don't get any if you get it on your hands make sure you don't touch your face or your eyes if you do wash them out really good and make sure that you call your doctor to see what they suggest you do next let's go out to the milkweed patch we're going to pick four stalks of milkweed to put in this enclosure we have two dedicated areas on our property for milkweed and this is the newer one and it's actually doing great this year. It is about the beginning of summer and we already have some great blooms. I'm going to take four of these and put them in my container. I did add a little bit of water to the bottom of this and it, that's just gonna prolong the life of the milkweed. So this is the white sap that I was talking about that can be harmful, so make sure you don't get it in your eyes. Also note that milkweed will come back, so I am cutting this down to the ground, and this milkweed will come back and be ready for our fall batch of monarchs that will come in about August or September. I am actually only going to put two in this because it we only have one monarch, one caterpillar right now, so this should be enough for that little guy for a while. I'm gonna take this all, I'm also, the leaves that I ripped off, I'm gonna take these inside because he can also eat and munch on these as well. We are back inside. I am going to put our milkweed in our enclosure. I'm gonna put it right in the middle. I did wash this enclosure with a light bleach water solution just to disinfect it and make sure that it was clean and ready for our new batch of caterpillars. I'm also going to take these leaves that I pulled off the bottom and just kind of line them on, put them on top of the container just as extra food if the caterpillar needs it. I'm going to save one because that will be come in handy to get this guy out. So let's get him out of his little It is not necessary to use a terrarium to house your egg or your caterpillars when they are little. You can collect eggs right from your garden and put them in here 
We just didn't have this set up and ready to go, which is why we opted for the terrarium. But as you can see, he is right here. He is getting nice and big. And all I'm gonna do is take this leaf with him on it, place it inside, and I'm gonna zip this up. I'm gonna make sure my zippers are down here on the bottom. That way when he tries to build his chrysalis, he doesn't block the zippers and then I can't get the enclosure open. I'm gonna leave this sit here for now. If you have kids or pets, you might wanna put it up a little bit higher so they don't shake it or try and pick it up. My kids have raised monarchs since they were babies, so they know not to disturb this. I can turn it so that the viewing glass is what is seen, which is fun for the kids to watch. After just a couple of days of your caterpillar being in the enclosure, you're gonna notice a lot of poop has developed in the enclosure. And that is perfectly normal. Caterpillars eat a lot, which means that they are going to poop a lot as well. If you have a small vacuum cleaner, kind of the ones that you would use to vacuum your keyboard, you can go in there and suck up all of that frost. It does make great compost and great fertilizer for your garden if you are a gardener. If not, make sure that you just sweep it all to the bottom and then kind of sweep it up with a, you can use a spoon to pick it up. I have used kids beach shovels to scoop it up and get it all out. Frost can be toxic for your caterpillars if there gets to be too much and it's not cleaned up, which makes sense because in nature that would fall to the ground and decompose. Because we're raising this caterpillar inside, it's not really going to decompose in our enclosure, so we wanna help out a little bit by cleaning it up. There are also some other ways that you can manage frost. You can do a quick Google search and people have come up with tons of different ideas of different ways to manage frost which is great. We find the easiest way for us is just to sweep it all into the bottom and then get one of those kids beat shovels and shovel it all out and throw it into our garden. If you want to see more of this little guy's adventure, make sure you head on over to Instagram and you can see tons of our monarch adventures and how the kids interact with this guy. If you want to see what is next for your monarchs, make sure you check out this video right here. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us at the farmhouse today and we will talk to you soon.